What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the Next Moon YT channel. In front of you, you see our aluminum rod. I am gonna need to do a project where I need to put a lot of these rods together at a perfect right angle and braze them together. Or if I choose to, I can use right angle braces to connect them. But whatever I'm doing, I'm gonna need to hold these together at a perfect right angle in order to join them. Uh, what you see in front of you are just short rods. They're the end pieces of from longer pieces, much longer pieces. They're like five feet long and some of them are eight feet long. So it's gonna be quite challenging to hold them together at a perfect right angle when I'm doing the connections. So to make it easier for myself, I'm gonna create a jig and the jig will go something like this. It's going to be a plain piece of square board that I'm going to use to hold these rods, which are going to be much longer in real practice. Uh, they're going to hold them at right angles for me to be able to assemble those corners, those right angle corners for myself. Not only will this jig work for metal, it will work for wooden frames as well if you need to. Here's an example. If I were to want to join these together, I can use the same jig to join wood together as well. Or if I want to do 45 degree joints, I can do that as well. So stay tuned. And if you wait to the end of the video, I'll give you a special tip on making this right angle jig even more useful. Stay tuned. So let's go over what we need for this jig. First, we need a square piece of wood. Uh, we need one edge to be very square, so they need to be at 90 degrees. So here's the wood that we need. So this, these two angles have to be exactly 90 degrees. Uh, the other angles, the other sides don't really matter. We're not going to use them to square up anything. So we need one face and another face squared. So here's the other half. This side won't, will not matter as much. Only the front edge we will be using to align everything. The next step is we will need to make cutouts. We, need, we will need to make a cutout here. That's one cutout, and we need to make another cutout on top. And then the next cutout will be over here. So this cutout is about a three inch, top to bottom is three inches, and the width is also three inches. Okay, so this hole is a little smaller, it will be two inch tall and by two inch wide so this hole is a little bigger and this one will be also two inch tall by two inch wide so that's going to be your jig and to get started with cutting out these squares within the board we're going to use a drill bit and drill here 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 and then also for the small square we're going to drill here 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 and the other small square will be will be doing the same. Drill here, 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 and here. So let me get my setup ready. Okay, guys, here's my wooden template that I've masked off. And what we am gonna cut out are the red lines. And just to go over the measurements again, the squares are two inches. I'm gonna use this edge as the straight one. And I'm going to use this edge as a straight one. So there are the squares are two inches from the side. As you can see, the two inches from the side. And the two inches on the bottom. And two inches on the bottom. So you wouldn't need this masking tape. I need this masking tape because of the type of wood I'm using. I don't want the veneer to flake off when I am cutting and drilling. So next, I'm going to start drilling. 
Okay, so I'm outside now, and I have my drill. This is the 5 16 inch drill bit. You can use whatever drill bit you want. Uh, the larger, the better. Uh, you just need a hole that's going to be wide enough to stick a jigsaw blade through. And now I'll show you how I'm going to drill out these squares. Uh, find a corner. Place it, your drill bit slightly inside the square. And drill. There you go, I have a hole. So you're gonna take your drill bit and do the same for each and every corner over here, over here. And same thing for the squares, small squares over here. Okay, I'm not gonna board you and videotape me drilling the rest of these holes. But once I drill out these holes, we're gonna continue from there. Stay tuned. All right guys, here with all the holes drilled out for each of the three squares. Next, we're going to put a jigsaw blade into each of these holes and follow the drawn out lines and cut out each square. Okay, that's what we're going to do next. Okay, the last step. Get yourself a jigsaw and put it in a hole, just like that. And then just trace the outline, just like that. And here's the final product. <coughs> We have three openings in a square piece of wood and let me clean this up and I'll show you how to use it. Alright guys, I have everything cleaned up on this right angle jig. So we have two small holes, one there, one there, and the larger hole in the middle. And as you can see, I'm using clamps, these are regular 4 inch clamps. And using this jig, I can hold these two aluminum square rods together at a perfect right angle check that out see so now I can do whatever I need to do to attach these aluminum pieces and one final thing I forgot to mention earlier is to cut a little relief meaning just it's a little triangle cut out here and the reason for that is to leave some space for the material you're joining in case it, if it's not exactly uh, square or flush at the bottom so that little triangular cutout will provide some relief and you'll have some working room okay there you go so in place of the metal rods you can use this on wood as well to, for example to make a picture frame and you want to glue them together and right now I have these two pieces cut at right angles but you can cut them at 45 degree angle and use this right angle clamp in the same way to join 45 degree uh, cuts if you were you know if you had that kind of a cut so check this out this is what it looks like so the, the other benefit is you don't need those very expensive right angle clamps that you can get at Home Depot they're not cheap and also you can use regular uh, clamps in this case I'm using D clamps instead of those very long extendable clamps those two feet by you know or three feet long clamps you can use any common clamps you, that you have at home if you guys enjoy this video give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and wait till the end I have a little bonus for you so this is a demonstration of how you would use a second little hole the reason why we have the second hole is so you can use two clamps on one side you can have two clamps here for one side and two clamps here on the other side and the reason is for added strength and the second hole basically will just give you another point that you can apply a, another clamp to when you have a material that is very long let's say that's about maybe two feet long or more so the second hole will give you just another uh, mounting point for a clamp to hold a long piece of material that you want to join. Thanks for staying to the end of the video. The rods that I've been working with were flat, meaning they're square tubes. 
but if you were working with something like a pipe, you can also use this uh, rig to uh, join tubes at 90 degrees if you need to for any particular reason. Uh, what you want to do is you would need a router bit that's rounded and you would take your router bit and go straight down the face of one side, just the inside. You can get a piece of wood that's maybe half an inch thick or maybe an inch thick if you need to. And with the router bit, you can just go straight down. That'll give you a nice little indented uh, cutout for you to then, if it was a pipe, you can just lay it here like that and it will not move around. It won't twist around. So with the rounded router bit, you can just go down the edge and put a little, like a chamber in there. Okay, so enjoy that tip. Don't forget to give a thumbs up to this video. Thanks again. See you guys next time.